When you're first beginning in research, whether you're developing a new project or joining someone else's, it's a good idea to start with a review of the existing literature. This will help you get an understanding of the research that's currently being done in that field. Throughout your research, you should continue to keep yourself up to date on the topic. Reading scholarly papers can help you refine your protocols, identify potential problems, and write your hypotheses. In your research work, your mentors and PIs may give you specific papers that they have already determined to be relevant, but you should know how to do the work of finding and evaluating these sources on your own. The first step to literature searching is knowing the question your research is going to address. You can then pull out keywords to use in a database search. You want to use keywords that are broad enough to include all relevant articles on the topic, but specific enough that your search doesn't include unrelated studies. If your search returns thousands of articles, try refining your keywords or adding a second term to the search. Pay attention to possible synonyms for your keywords and make sure you're using scientific terms as much as possible. These are the terms that researchers will have used in their papers so they will return much better matches. If you already have a paper on your topic, look at the keywords the author identified and try searching for those. We're going to focus on using Google Scholar today, but this isn't your only option. Many databases exist. Two others that you can explore are PubMed and Biomed Central. Once you have identified a few keywords for your research topic, we can start to put them into our databases and see what we get back. To help you do this, you can use Boolean operators. These are pretty standard across most databases, but not all. If a particular operator isn't working, check the help section of the database to see if it uses it. The first operator we'll talk about is one you've probably used before. It's the grouping operator. If your search keywords are actually a phrase, then you can put the entire thing in quotation marks. This lets the search engine know that you are looking for the words together, and it will ignore results that contain the two words separately. The next operator is the AND operator. When you put AND between two different search terms, it will let the database know only to return articles that include both terms, although they don't have to be right next to each other. You can use this in connection with the grouping operator, but be careful not to put it inside the quotations. A database looks for exact matches of whatever you put inside quotes, so it will treat the AND like any other word. If you don't need both terms to be in the same article, but still want to search for both at the same time, you can use the OR operator. When you put OR between words, the database will return any results that contain at least one of the terms. Another important operator is the truncation operator. You can use this when you want to search a term that has multiple possible endings, instead of including each form of the term individually. With most databases, it's important to include as much of the search term as you can and only exclude the portion that may change. If you truncate too early, you may get a search that accidentally includes unrelated terms that happen to start the same way. However, in Google Scholar, you can use this by searching any term with an asterisk after it, and Google will know to search for alternate endings of that term as well. One last operator is the NOT operator, which should be used very sparingly. Putting NOT before a word will tell the database to ignore any results that would be returned by a search of that word. This may lead you to accidentally filtering out some sources that could be useful to you. A good time to use this is if you are trying to search a keyword that is part of multiple common phrases and you only want to return one of them. You can either put your entire term in quotes or use a NOT operator to ensure the unwanted term is ignored. You aren't limited to using only one operator per search. If we want to use multiple operators in connection with each other, we can use the nesting operators. Just like in math when you put parentheses around a part of an equation that needs to be taken together, you can put them around part of a search. When you get good at using them, you can come up with incredibly refined searches that will increase your chances of finding the articles you need while sorting out anything you don't want. While it's good to understand how to use Boolean operators by typing them into your search bar, you can also pull up the advanced search window in most databases. This is what it looks like in Google. Each of these fields corresponds to a Boolean operator, so if you know which one to use, you don't need to use an advanced search. 
Once you've completed your search and it has returned your results, you'll have to determine which papers are going to be the best sources for you to read. Before you even click on an article, your results page will have a lot of information that will be useful to you in determining whether or not that paper will be relevant. You can see the title, the date it was published, and how many times it was cited. If the paper you're reading was published a long time ago, it's unlikely to have information that will be particularly useful for you. Since different research areas are advancing at different speeds, the cutoff date can vary for what is considered too old to still be relevant. When you click on an article, it will take you to the page of the journal that the article was published in, or another third-party site where you'll be able to see the title, the authors, and the abstract, along with some other information. It's important to read the abstract because it will let you know whether this paper really fits your topic and whether it's worth downloading and reading. Abstracts are short, usually only one paragraph or about 300 words, but they will give you an overview of the work that was done by the authors. It will include their study goal, their methods, the most important results, and their major conclusions. It may also include a sentence of introduction or background about this particular field of research or the problem their work was trying to address. This section will almost never include any discussion and often omits less important results, so reading the abstract can never substitute for actually reading the paper. Some papers you will want to use will be locked behind a paywall. Once you are doing research for an academic institution, they will have subscriptions to a variety of these sites so you can download your papers for free. For now, if you find a paper you would like to use but can't download, Email the full title and the first author's name to Liv or Mike and we can download it for you. In the future, you can also reach out to the author directly. The author submitted their work for publication in a journal and the journal will charge a fee for a download, but the author still retains ownership of the work and can send it to anyone they want for free. Some papers will be open source and you will be able to download a PDF directly from Google Scholar or from the journal's website. It can be tempting to do a search and download every paper you find that may possibly be useful, but remember that just downloading them isn't enough. Download only a few papers from each search and then make sure you read them. A paper isn't useful if it's saved on your computer without ever having been read.